The problem is the regular vaccines and the cancers and the monkey viruses weren't doing it fast enough. They had to make a real killer disease even more deadly, even more deadly than the 1918 mistake. I have a document that's not even supposed to be published until October. The title of this document is called Resurrected Pandemic Influenza Viruses. That name itself ought to tell you something. What this whole article is talking about is the work done from 1997 to the present, 2009, concerning the information that was found by analyzing that 1918 pathogen. And what comes out very clearly is they have been able to replicate the virus, first of all, but they have found what caused it to be so deadly. And yes, indeed, they magnified that. Whereas the morbidity, mortality rates of the 1918 virus was as much as, as 10 percent, which, which is really high, really high for a, a pathogen of this nature. This report shows that un, un, unlocking these gene structures, these protein structures, they have believed that they have increased it to 70 to 80 percent mortality. Let's hear it for the Department of Defense. Okay. Why the mad rush to vaccinate? Okay. All the reports show that what has been released is as, as, as benign as a common cold. The only people that have died from this are people that have had other health problems, other disease states already. So you see why the mad rush to vaccinate. Use your brain. A sick population, world or otherwise, is a very easy population to control. Motive. Opportunity, yes. Now I have files that thick of this information. I've employed some attorneys to say, how can we get the word out on CNN? How can we get this, this story to be told? We have the documentation, how can we do it? My attorney, she's brilliant. She makes a few phone calls to the Attorney General's Office of Utah, who also makes some phone calls and talks to the U.S. Attorney's Office. These are federal charges, even international charges, because you know what? People have died from this already. Right? You know what the U.S. Attorney's Office has told me? Mr. Otis, it's no, it's no crime to recreate a weaponized virus under the D Department of Defense, DOD's directives at Fort Detrick. They do it all the time. The anthrax killer was multiplied into what's called the Ames strain by genetic alterations at Fort Detrick. A very dangerous killer anthrax doesn't hold a candle to this virus, right? It's not a crime to do that. You know, I had scratched my head and said, well, it should be, but I guess you're right. Everything's fair in war, right? Everything's fair in love and war, right? So it's not a crime. And then he said, well, you know, if you have this weaponized virus, you need to protect your own troops. So, what's criminal about Novartis making a patent for a vaccine for it? Right? Gosh, you know, the U.S. Attorney is saying, how can I prove criminal charges? He said to me, oh, my attorney uh, through him said, bring me the smoking gun as to how it was released. You see, it's not a crime, she said, to have in a level three secure facility Ames strain of anthrax. That's not illegal. But the minute you send it out in a terrorist type of letter to a senator's office, to a radio station, 
in Florida and other people. That becomes a federal crime then, doesn't it? You see? So we're trying to find that smoking gun. Somebody needs to come forward with some humanity to know how it's done. Because I guarantee you, it didn't happen by nature's God. It was released. A very mild form of it. It's called a 1918 slash like. Like virus. It's a recombinant virus, but it's very benign. It's the weakened, weakened state. We're hoping and praying we get a whistleblower. And then justice will be served. Hopefully before this comes into the vaccine and mass vaccination campaigns. That's what we're hoping for. That's a very good point. Ingra Cassell has asked, how do we know it wasn't part of the last year's seasonal flu vaccine, which has been shown to have components of an H1N1 swine flu virus? Well, it's possible. We, you know, a match, one batch, one batch is all it takes. But again, we need to prove that. We need to prove that it was done purposefully with willful malice. There's a lot of possibilities of how this did come out, but the point is, a triple recombinant sliced gene clade virus is weaponized, is made in a laboratory. It does not, cannot happen naturally. Any virologist that knows his or her business will tell you that. There are protections with sp specific species for their genes to be protected. To break those down, you have to go into a laboratory and or mix them with other toxic substances in a big vat, like they did in 1918, to make it happen. Now again, I want to make it very clear, 1918 was a mistake. I don't think for a minute it was done on purpose. I think, uh, yeah, there were profit motives involved, most definitely. But I think it was just bad science, ignorant science. Okay? But I submit to you what is criminal now is not exposing the story. Folks, in a scientific model as a scientist, I like to think of myself as a research scientist. Oftentimes, the simplest explanation is the right explanation. I happened as an act of God. I am smarter than that. So the only other way it could happen is by recombination of this, by harvesting the genes and structures and putting it into the different species. Okay, that's the only way it could have happened. So, I want to just kind of wrap up I challenge you to, uh, to go home and check out what I'm going to tell you next, because it's really important as to what you can do. We're not powerless, not by any means. The World Health Organization, by means of treaty ratification, they ratified something called the International Health Regulations, IHR. So go home and in your search engine, WHO IHR International Health Regulations it's right there on the web you can pull up the agreement the treaty and see what mem member nations signed off on it 